All right, welcome back for the last part of One Man's Faith. Our topic is, is God is King, okay? That's, that's what we're looking at, but it's about prayer, and you'll see that especially, especially next week. But we've been looking at there are 10 aspects or 10 parts to a kingdom, okay? Uh, and also the way the kingdom is set up governmentally is different. You have the king. The king sits on a throne, and you know some of this. I mean, if you've watched any of the TV shows that with, uh, you know, you know that talk about kingdoms and the king and the throne, he doesn't just sit on the throne to be high and mighty. The king is on the throne, and the throne is in the courtroom. Okay, it is from there that he makes judgments and rules. When he's not on the throne, he normally doesn't make judgments. If the judgments are people who have problems with each other or with things that are going on, and so they come to the king. Uh, it's very close to our courtrooms here. We have a king, i.e., okay, a judge. He sits on his seat. He is king of that courtroom. Do you understand that? If you do something he doesn't like, he can do whatever he wants. He can kick you out. He can throw you in jail. That's his prerogative because that's his courtroom. Okay? Within the courtroom situation, you have the king on the throne. You have advisors around him. You have the legal system of, a, uh, of an adversary who's bringing, acting kind of like what we call a prosecutor, and you have the defense team, and you have witnesses, okay? If you've ever been in court, you know that you've seen most of this, but it's true of God and his kingdom. He sits and he reigns. Now, let me give you some scriptures now. Let me show you some scriptures. One of them is Job. Job, uh, Job chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan was among them. This is courtroom terms. They're going into the courtroom to present themselves. Well, another way you could kind of look at that, uh, uh, Esther. Uh, the book of Esther talks about... Uh, Artaxerxes, who is king over Persia, Babylon, uh, Persia. And nobody could come before him unless he held out his scepter to be presented before him to bring whatever they were going to bring. Okay? And so he comes before him and, and God says, oh, come on, you're not going to consider my servant Job, are you? In other words, he, God knew that the Satan was getting ready to bring some kind of accusation against Job. And, and the Satan answered, God says, what? You don't think Job doesn't fear you for nothing? You've got this hedge around him. You've got this hedge. He's, he's you know, you know, he, you're blessing him. Uh, but, he's, but Satan says, if you put forth your hand and touch him, I think you'll find out. You see, he's bringing accusation against Job. This is what he does to you and I. He is constantly before the court finding things to bring us down. Especially if we sin, we open the door. He goes right in and says, hey, your boy Neil just did this. Ha! He doesn't deserve whatever. And if there's not a defense brought against it, then he is allowed to wreak havoc in our lives. Okay? That's one, that's one example. Uh, Daniel is another one. Oh, I love this one. Daniel 7, verse 9. I kept looking until the thrones, plural, 
were set up. And the Ancient of Day took his seat. His vesture was like white snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheels were burning fire. Do you remember we were hearing about wheels before? The cherubim, the four creatures, they moved around. They didn't, they, you know, they were, one had the, one had the face of a man, an ox, an eagle, and a lion. But they had wheels. And wherever they went, the wheels were there. The wheels were life, their life. So God has a life, all right? The cherubim were made in an, in an image that, re, that had the same, maybe because they were spiritual beings, I don't know. But, but God has life, okay? God has life. And he sits on a throne. And it says, now, now talk about, okay, court has advisors, even God. Uh, was it verse 10? After, the, after coming out from before him, thousands upon thousands were attending him. And myriads upon myriads, that's, that's a gazillion, okay, were standing before him. The court sat and the books were open. We're seeing kind of an, I believe here, a kind of an end time picture where the people are coming to be judged by God. And so the books are open. The court sits. It is not just God by himself sitting. It's very possibly the, it's God and the 24 because we have a similar picture in Revelation chapter 4. It says there are 24 thrones and there are 24 elders sitting. It's very possibly that 12 are representatives from the tribes of Israel and the other 12 are the, disciples, are, are the apostles. Uh, it doesn't say, but that's because it says, and the elders, and they have crowns. And uh, we have the, uh, we have the, uh, the parable of the 10 that are given 10 minus each, and they are to deal with them until he comes back, until the, 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 uh, the Lord comes back. And when he does, two of them had increased to, to double what they had. And in both cases, the Lord said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been uh, faithful over a few. You will now have control over cities. First one had 10 cities, the second one had five cities. So, so part of what we, you and I are going to be rewarded with, depending on how we handle ourselves here, are, is going to be control or rulership over people's nations, cities. Okay, that's, that's part. We, we need to understand, too. Let me, this, I'm going to deviate here. We need to understand that what we do here, how we operate here, will affect our eternity. It's important to understand. If you do not accept Jesus as Lord and let him be Lord of your life, your eternity is going to be hell. God set it up that way because he allowed his son to come and die for you and for your sins even before you came into existence. His expectation and demand in order to be with him, the requirement is Jesus being your Lord. And you know, the interesting part is he doesn't do it to put you down or put you under or really to demand and control your life. 
that's part of it. It's part of lordship is allowing him to have control of your life. But we've got to understand, we've got to see it's for our good, not for our detriment. You know, I, I, again, I'll go to, the, I'll go to uh, Jeremiah 29. Uh, and, you, and I've quoted this, and you probably know it. Some of you can probably and are saying it even right now while I'm turning. It says, God says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. You see, God is out for your good. He says, listen, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. That's what God says. Does that sound like a dictatorship type Lord that we are so used to? He is the king. And as king and you being in his domain, and yes, you are in his domain, it is incumbent upon us to obey him and let him be Lord. Lord is tied to king and kingdom. There is no other government that has Lord outside of a kingdom. And he wants to be Lord. He wants to give you good things. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. All these things was everything that was needed for life. This is what, this is part of kingdom. The king has control over and, and responsibility for his citizens. And this is what God has for you. Let him be king. Let him be Lord of your life. Let him have control. Psalm 139 says that he wrote about you in your book before you were born, every day of your life and what he wanted you to do. And so he has things planned for you that he wants you to do, but you've got to give yourself over to him in order to accomplish what he's written for you. Just give your life to him and let him have control. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll see you next time.